I want to introduce to you Ian Morris. Ian's an accomplished TV producer and director with a passion to help audiences to engage with the big questions in life. He's currently producing a TV series for mainstream TV called The God Question, in which atheists and theists express their views and their arguments. It's hoped that this series will stimulate serious debate throughout the culture when it's aired on TV. Will you give a warm welcome to Ian Morris? Thank you, Nick. One thing Nick might have said is that I don't always sound like this. <clears throat> I'm going to speak to you for two and a half minutes before showing you uh, the series or excerpts from the series Nick was talking about. If your mind wanders just once, you'll miss completely everything I've got to say. So, there we are. Just concentrate for a moment on what we're here to do this week. It's quite clear that the leaders of this Congress have convened this uh, meeting to communicate what we believe is the truth about God. The verse that is the theme verse is God in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. In many parts of the world, probably the one that you come from, there's a battle going on, going on about the central concept of that verse, which is the word God himself. And much of the debate about God is taking place within the very public channels of uh, mass media. As you were responding just now to the questions, uh, many of you were talking about world views about th that are communicated through mass media. But mass media are also communicating views about God. And what kind of things are they saying? Well, here are some of the messages that I think I've identified. That faith is irrational and anti-science. That a natural process such as how life began and evolved, understood, needs no further explanation. God, if you want to use that term, means something to do with magic, pizzazz, some kind of micromanagement as well of everything that goes on. A plethora of chance processes is sufficient to explain complex life. And by the way, religion, of course, is dangerous. And if you want to talk about Jesus, well, there is no reliable evidence for the supernatural claims of his resurrection. If you want to talk about morality, well, that doesn't depend on God. In any case, God, if he existed, would prevent suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, we're up against it in terms of the messages that the mass media communicate uh, to the world. On the basis that the mass media matter, which of course is why we've convened this session, the question arises, what can believers do? We can sit and analyze media to our heart's content, but how can we actually respond? What kind of opportunities do we have? Well, I'm trying to do something about it along with others. That's not a statement of pride, just a statement of fact. And I want to give that uh, resource to you so that we might use it uh, in our cultures in order to open up and discuss the big questions about God. And so our response has been the setting up of a charitable organization whose brand is Search for Truth. We're project presently producing a series of TV programs, The God Question. And the series is an open exploration about God. It's not propaganda, and it's not preaching. It is an invitation to reason in the company of those who believe in God, and just as much in the company of those who do not. It's bringing forth the evidence on which anyone of a rational persuasion would attempt to make up their mind about God, and demonstrating how that evidence can be interpreted in favor of God's existence, or indeed in rejection of it. You make up your own mind. This is the basis for discussion. This is an opportunity not only for people to reflect themselves, but to engage other people in the process. Which side provides the better interpretation of the evidence? Indeed, can truth speak for itself? Ian, yeah, thank you so much for that. Now, you're going to show us a clip from it, an extract that you've put together, a compilation of different people, Christians, non-Christians, atheists, theists. Can you uh, uh, show us that? I wonder if we could have that okay. uh, click through from the back. Is there something more than all this? It matters enormously whether or not God exists. Wasting your time being wrong is the, the modus operandi of religion. I think we are the winners in a lottery. Just a bit of luck, or is there something going on? 
God is a lie. The proposition that there isn't a God is utterly irrational. There's nothing more useful than the truth. If I was a Christian or a believer, I would stay the hell out of this argument. You've got nothing. They're angry because if we're right, uh, they would miss the whole game. Religious explanations, although they may have been satisfying for many centuries, are now superseded and outdated. The alternative, God or science, is a false alternative logically. We need to face up to the issues because truth is one of the great Christian claims. Sometimes I'm fond of calling myself a militant agnostic. I don't know and you don't either. <laughs> the Big Bang Theory is as certain as anything in science. Where the Big Bang came from or what started it, what powered it, we don't know. That really is genuinely difficult. Uh, we don't know. Why does the universe seem so balanced for life to exist? The universe is not very finely tuned for life. There's hardly anywhere you could live. You have to have at least, at least the basic six or seven right laws. If one of them were missing, you wouldn't be able to have life. What's the significance of human beings in such a vast cosmos? I just don't know. No one else can decide for you. Is the evidence, where does it point, is it enough for me to commit my life and base my life on it? Bacterium, tree, you, me, we all descend from a common microbial ancestor. You don't need a big man with a white beard up in the sky. I think that I am about as certain that God doesn't exist as I am that the Easter Bunny doesn't exist. There's another entity in the universe besides matter and energy, and that entity is mine. God is responsible for sustaining every moment and every particle of existence in the universe. The whole point of Darwinian natural selection is that it works without design, without foresight. I find personally atheism to be intellectually incoherent. You cannot use evolution to account for its own existence. Genesis is primarily telling me where I come from. To claim that here's the scientific account and here's the creationist account, and that's the only two possible choices, is profoundly mistaken. If there is a God, then I'd hate to meet him. I regard the worship of a supreme being as, in a way, humanity's oldest problem. I'm out there trying to find the truth. I'm trying to get to the bottom of things. I hope all human beings are engaged in the search for truth, whether they're religious or not. The total number of possible connections within this human brain are greater than the number of particles in the known universe. We are very much sense-oriented, and spiritual experience doesn't fit into that kind of category. The dying process is not just a switching off. I had the rare privilege of glimpsing heaven. Are we naturally calibrated to have religious and spiritual experiences? And, and I think that the evidence suggests that we are. I would not want them to put me in society, the man that I was. No one has yet been able to explain how brain cells could generate a thought. Natural selection is a process that can generate complexity, and there's no reason to think that it can't explain the complexity of the human brain. I would very much like to be immortal.